CG asked a question, but I'm going to change the question. I saw this question earlier, and I said, you know what? This is a, and this this will be a good one. I, I don't I don't know how long we're going to be on this particular question, but CG asked a question. I'm going to change the question. He says in Acts nine eighteen, what kind of baptism was Paul baptized in water or spiritual baptism? I, I'm going to change the question just slightly for you guys, because I want you guys to. Uh, I want this is where we're going to do some thinking. This is where some some thinking and some thunking will be done. And hopefully after this, uh, you're going to roll your eyes around in your head a little bit, move some stuff. And just because there's two possibilities here, there are two possibilities to what we're going to look at. And here is the question. When we get to Acts, the question is, do we, was Paul ever recorded? Now we know it happened, but does the Bible ever say that Paul was baptized in water or does the bible ever say that tell us when paul received the holy spirit that's nasa do think about that for a second does the bible tell us that paul ever we know he received the holy spirit but does the bible ever tell us when paul received the holy spirit or does the bible ever tell us that paul was baptized okay uh, that's a that's, that's a good question and i want y'all to think about that for a second okay well, of course, we, the Bible tells us when Paul was 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 baptized or no, I'm saying baptized in water. Was Paul baptized in water? Does the Bible tell us that Paul received the Holy? Well, we know he received the Holy Spirit because the Bible later on says that he was full of the Spirit. But when? How did Paul receive the Holy Spirit? Was it by Ananias laying his hands on him? That is a pretty good question. The reason why is because eh, there's a little bit of ambiguity to the statement and you could go both ways with it. Which statement are you talking about, Corey? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go to Acts 9. Let's, I think let's we'll start in verse 12. Uh, no, start in 11. He's, God is, the Lord is speaking to Ananias. And the Lord said to him, and I would say this, by the way, guys, by the way, do this for me, guys. So I don't miss your, miss your questions. I would hold off on writing the questions because I won't see them while I go while, while I go over this, okay? I do have about 20 or so already marked, but if you want me to see them, then I would probably hold off until after I finish this. That, that way, when my eyes turn back this way, because the questions are, are literally right here, and the the, uh, the scriptures are right here, the other little component is right there. I've got something right here, and then I got the camera right there. So I would say hold off on asking questions. If you want to, now go ahead. You can keep asking if you want to, but just so that I can make sure that I see them, that you don't have to keep typing them over and over again. But look at 9, verse 11. Uh, and the Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight. Now, this is this is Saul, Paul, Saul. By the way, question, when was Saul's name changed to Paul? It was never changed to, to Paul. Saul and Paul, same name. One is the Roman name. One is his Jewish name. Okay, so that being the question, I mean, being stated, Saul or Paul is persecuting the church. Okay. Uh, Christopher says he was he was filled when Ananias laid his hands on him. Okay, then we're gonna have and it, and it, it may very well be, but let's see and let's see if we can kind of ascertain. Uh, where did I leave off at? Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire of the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying, and he has and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So what is he going to go lay his hands on him? According to this passage, so that he may regain his sight. Now let's see if he gives more detail as to when he's going to lay his hands on him, what he's going to lay on lay his hands on him for, okay? Uh, but Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much, he harm, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind who called on your name. So remember, people have left they are starting to disperse because they're in Jerusalem. And then here comes Paul, Saul, doing all this damage in Jerusalem. So they're leaving. Now he's here and he's got, he's got authority to bind people, to catch people. But the Lord said to him, go for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And after laying him, here it is. And after laying his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you were coming, has sent me that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the question is, is he saying 
that by me laying my hands on you, you're going to gain, gain your sight, as as well as me laying my hands on you, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, or you're going to gain your sight, and then you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a reason why I asked it that way. Uh, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he regained his sight. And he got up and was baptized, and he took food and was strengthened there. Now let's stop for a second. Let's stop. In that passage, does this passage say, verse 18, let's put it back on the screen, and immediately, this is him laying his hands on him, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. So now he's receiving his sight, but it's the next part that requires some, some thought. And he regained his sight, and he got up and was baptized. Now the question, and he got up and was baptized, is that to say that he got up and was baptized in the Spirit? Or is that to say that he got up and he was baptized in water? Okay, that's the question. What say you guys? And we're going to look at a few more scriptures, but what, what do you guys say? Is he saying that he was baptized in the Holy Spirit? Or he was baptized in water? Because it did say, it does say, and he got up and getting up. As a matter of fact, uh, this is a participle. So now, so it can be taken, it can be taken as he's getting up. And getting up was baptized. Is this to say that he was baptized in water or baptized in the spirit? The reason why this is an issue, guys, is because I, we did this some time ago. Maybe two, three, four months ago, we covered baptism and how there are times where you see baptism being baptized. And sometimes it means water. Sometimes it means the spirit. Sometimes we don't know. So the question is. Which one is this? And I think I used uh, magenta for the spirit, blue or kind of cayenne for water, and then white for, I don't know. So what do you guys think? Now, let's go look at some other passages and let's see as well. Let's go to this passage next. I think that, yeah, here's one. Acts 13, 9. But Saul, who was also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze on him and said, who are you? Full, uh, now, at this point in time, though, Paul is full of the Holy Spirit. So this is after chapter nine. So at some point in time, Paul has gotten full of the Holy Spirit. Was that at Ananias putting his hands on him? Hmm. And and do we say that someone's received? Because in this case, this would be the only case, the only case of someone receiving the Holy Spirit at the hands of a man who was not an apostle, okay? This would be the only case of someone receiving the Holy Spirit at the hands of a man who was not an apostle, okay? Not that it necessarily means anything. There is, there's no rule written in heaven that says it can only be done. It can only happen at the hands of the apostle. It just so happens that we, we see this happening at the hands of the apostles, okay? So, but then here's another passage and this might throw a little bit of a monkey wrench into this. Acts 22, let's start in verse 12. Now, Paul is describing this. By the way, let me ask you guys a question. You all think the whole you all think the Holy Spirit is pretty important to Paul? Do you think that Paul regards the Holy Spirit, you know, in a in a in a high has high regard for the Holy Spirit? Sure, especially anybody and everybody wanting um the Holy Spirit. Any and everybody wanting to be saved. Remember. The Bible tells us that the, the identifying mark of all believers is what? The Holy Spirit. We know that, that that's what makes you a believer if you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, Acts 22, 12, notice what he says. He says, a certain Ananias, that well, he, Paul is speaking in the past, a man who was devout by the standard of the law and well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and standing near said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at the very time I looked up uh, and he said, the God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear an utterance from his mouth. For you will be a witness of him to all men of what you have seen and heard. Now, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling his name. So now all of you that thought that or said, I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but all of you that said that. Chapter 9, let's go back to it. Chapter 9 of Acts 
verse eight, he says, and immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he regained his sight and got up. Now, this is a participle uh, and got up. So at while or it could be after after a while getting getting up, he was baptized. And some of you said that this was a spirit baptism, but this passage is describing the same thing. Paul says, uh, for you'll be a witness to him in verse 16 he says, and now why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash your sins. Now, do you all think that this passage, verses 15, 16, verses 12 through 16, do you think this baptized right here, do you all think this is a spirit baptism or a water baptism? So what do you, what do you all think about this? Just this passage, 22, 12 through, through 16, do you think when he says, why do you delay, get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, do you think he's referring to a water baptism or a spirit baptism? And then also, how many of you all changed your answer? How many of you all went from spirit baptism to water baptism? Now, and be honest, be honest, which, how many of you all went from, you know what, earlier I thought it was spirit baptism, now I think this is water baptism. How many of y'all said spirit and still believe spirit? How many of y'all said water and still be water? How many of y'all said water and went to spirit? Yes, yeah, Sierra, wash would make you think of water, but not always. What? Not, not always. How do we know so? Well, because Titus says that we have been renewed and uh, by the washing and regeneration of the soul. Washing does not always, again, guys, Washing does not always entail a physical water. So let me say this. <laughs> Chris said, I, yeah, I changed. Now, here's the thing. If you think it's spirit, it can be. It, it can still be spirit. I think that Acts 22, 12 could still be referring to spirit. And But it's kind of, kind of hard when he says this, though. For you will be my witness to him. Now, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized. Well, to get up and be baptized, could he be saying get up and receive the Holy Spirit? Could, but that that's a that's a bit clunky, isn't it? That's a bit clunky. And notice what seems to be conspicuously absent when Paul makes a statement. He says, uh, let's see. He came to me and standing near me said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very time, I looked up at him. So he, Paul doesn't seem to indicate that he received the Holy Spirit. Now, it could be. I think, I think that here, Paul was, personally, I think that Paul was water baptized. Although, if you notice the, the underlying word for, uh, for baptized, it's, it's underlined in white. I'm open to it being either way. I can see, I've heard people make cases for either or. Uh, but I'm going to go with, if I had to lean one way or the other, I would lean to your to your question, CG. I would lean that Paul was water baptized here in Acts 9. Now, the issue is, though, if we go back to Acts 9, when did Paul receive the Holy Spirit? Because if Acts 9 and Acts 22, same event, is speaking of Paul getting water baptized, well, within when did Paul receive the Holy Spirit? And this is going to be one of those deals where, regardless of your answer, if you think that when Ananias laid his hands on him, that's when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's fine. We just don't have an account of when he was baptized in physical water. Or if you think that this is Ananias baptizing him in physical water, we just don't have an account of when Paul was baptized in the Holy Spirit. We believe both happened. I, I, I think both happened, but the scriptures don't have to tell us that. OK, so that that's the whole point. I don't, I'm not trying to trick you guys or anything like that, but I just want to kind of put that out there that if you make a statement, you got to you got to prove the statement and then also defend it. If if there is a competing passage that might seem to go differently. Amen.